Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Bruno's RPG Talk. So, um, yeah, the, the last episode I had about Machinations of the Space Princess, um, in the comment section, um, I got into uh, this uh, short conversation with other people about uh, saving throws. And uh, someone mentioned that for them, harsh saving throws were fine because um, they would use them sparingly. Whereas my point was more like, no, it's actually something that comes up often in play. Just saying you're not going to use them often uh, is not really a reason to have um, harsh saving throws when they represent something that shouldn't be that harsh. Or It's hard to explain in the sense that I think that some saving throws should be hard and others shouldn't. And uh, especially if they represent something specific. Um, whereas I'll be fine with... with harsh saving throws when they represent something more vague perhaps or um, saving throws when uh, for example when it depends on what you're facing um, instead of the nature of it so um, oh yeah and in case you hadn't guessed by now I'm talking about D&D &D and its variants so I'm gonna just get started I'm gonna talk about saving throws and like the D&D &D games I have and what I think of them. So for stars, uh, the ND 3.5 Pathfinder. Um, what I find ironic about it is that, for for being one of the most mechanically complex versions of the ND, 3.5 has only three saving throws. It's a fortitude, reflex, and will. Like only three of them. That's the like almost the shortest of the list. I'll get back to that. But, yeah, I think that's kind of weird in a way, because this is kind of like the version that, that takes into account so many things, and it's like saving throws, three of them. Um, they represent very direct aspects of a character, like, the way they resist to things is very defined. They resist a lot of magic with their willpower, uh, you know, um, poisons to fortitude, or like attacks that could disintegrate them as fortitude, uh, reflex to avoid a dragon's red weapon, to... Stuff like that, void traps. Um, some people don't like that, they prefer the more vague versions. I'm perfectly fine with this one. Although, playing older versions has kind of made me like having a long list of saving throws. Um, and, and I do think that... How can I put this? Um, if you're gonna go this route, if you're gonna go with this is for your, you know, uh, 42 is from Constitution, um, Will is from Wisdom, like, Reflex is from uh, Dexterity. If you're gonna go that route, I actually think you might as well go all the way, like Machinations of the Space Princess did, and just go every ability score represents a direct um, representation. For example, like, Strength goes with a saving throw, uh, Power, constitution becomes toughness, uh, charisma becomes charm, um, you know, uh, intelligence becomes logic, uh, wisdom becomes will again. And I think if you're gonna go the 3.5 way of saying these saves are very specific characteristics of the character, you might as well go all the way and have all the ability scores like be connected to a specific save. Now, what I didn't like about the saving throws in uh, Machinations, and I mentioned it before, was that a character with a strength of 18, according to the ability scores they would be given in this, uh, they would still have less than 50% chance of succeeding in a, like, a roll. Uh, but it's easily solved. Um, I was starting to come up with house rules and everything, but in the end, um, I just take, uh, I just took a page from, uh, well, common sense really, and the next one I'm gonna mention, but just saying, well, you give bonuses and penalties according to what it is. So, uh, for example, like uh, let's say a, a human with average strength would have a strength of ten, so that means the in machinations, that's half the your ability score rounded up. That means that a common human has a power saving throw of 5. 
So you just go with the idea, well, okay, so an object that a normal human person would have a 50% chance of lifting correctly would be a plus 5 bonus, because then like 5 plus 5 becomes 10 and a d20. So you simply go with that. And then if the character has like a strength of 18 and he has a saving throw of 9, you give him that plus 5 and suddenly it's representative now. Um, so I like... The, uh, for example, what I like about 3.5, and I kind of skipped it, sorry. What I like about 3.5 saving throws are that if you're a level 1 and you have a good constitution, let's say you have 18 constitution, you do have that plus 4 to your saving throw and fortitude, and that shows, like, even like a, a plus 1 character with an 18 and dexterity has a plus 4 in, in reflex, that shows, like, Characters of an average score there, many levels later, how would I put this, like, might be equal to you at level 1 if you have a plus 4. So, what I mean to say is, um, from the start, the saving throws are representative of a character's, um, you know, ability scores that are derived from it, from them. And, um, there are things with the the uh, DC. You seem, yeah. You know, for example, you have to get a fifteen on a D twenty. It's considered a difficult task. It's considered hard. So, um, you know, you you still have good chances to get it with a like. Let's say you have plus four, and depending on your class, so it's still doable. But it's beginning to be difficult. So it's representative, like monsters and everything. Um, the difficulty you have to to surpass for specific poisons depending on how difficult they are so i think what works is if a level one is most people um it works from that mindset whereas like uh, something hard is 15 so it's very doable for a character but it is hard you know and then you get more heroic as you do in D D, and the saving throws get better so i like that i just as i mentioned maybe in 3.5 the one fly i found is like why not take it all the way? If you're gonna go with that, why stop at three? Um, yeah, especially if, maybe for a, a version of D&D that tries to keep it simple, but it's not the case for 3.5, so... Now, in this one, I like that they went all the way in that aspect, but I don't like the um, chances you have. They, I don't find them representative of the ability scores. I find them the, the team's representative, but not the numbers you get. Especially in a game where your ability, uh, your saving throws are not gonna progress, and you have to invest skill points in them that could otherwise go to other stuff. And if you're a killer, which is this game's uh, fighter, uh, you kind of want to put your skill points in stuff that will make you a better fighter. You know, you don't want to have to. Uh, I don't have a choice if I want to stay relevant to get, you know, take my ability, uh, my saving throws, and make them better. And the the thing that I want to really emphasize is that people who say oh saving throws are for when a character make a mis makes a mistake or saving throws are for no that's not true that's or you have to use them sternly that that's not true either like as soon as you pick up any adventure um or or you know i, I like for example I, I i tend to come up with my own scenarios but i really like to lately have a mix of just grabbing some free dungeons online, or maybe buying a few, or buying an adventure and looting the dungeon from it, or uh, and just using it in my campaign, like, because I'm doing a hex map, and just, like, saying, okay, so this dungeon will be here, and everyone, like, every single one I'll read uh, has saving throws for stuff, it's not just pure combat, or, so it's not true that you can just use them sparingly in D&D, I completely disagree with that notion. Uh, maybe the way you run the game makes it so saving throws come up very rarely, and I even think, uh, I'm even starting to really enjoy the use of saving throws. I, I think it's very fun to use them, to find ways to use them, maybe uh, in ways that weren't used before or not often. So, um, yeah, especially for old school games that maybe don't have all the skills that um, 3.5 would have, then maybe in 3.5 I have you to say, okay, so use a skill, but maybe in some of the versions you go with saving throws. For example, uh, Crips and Things, which is a variant of Swords and uh, Wizardry. Uh, I don't have Swords and Wizardry itself, but basically both use a single saving throw. 
and uh, that's it. Like you have a sync trophy, you don't have to wonder. Well, if a beholder tries to disintegrate my character, do I have to save against death, or do I have to save against magic, or against uh, ray, or whatever you know, saving throws your game has? No, you have a single saving throw. And and what they did in Crypts and Things, which isn't what they did for uh, uh, Swords and Wizardry, but you could use easily uh, just import the rule, is that in Crypts and Things which is for kind of like a Conan vibe, like, you know, swords and sorcery, really, instead of the more Tolkien-esque D&D, but I digress. Um, what they do is they use the saving throw for everything, like skills are from the saving throw, and you get modifiers to them according to the ability score, so if you're, example, trying to lift something, then you add your strength score to that roll, and... Um, Depending also on your class, you may get bonuses, like if you're a thief, then you get bonuses to thief-related uh, skills. I kind of like that, in the sense that if you're going to go for simple, go all the way. Um, it, it really works. Uh, I really, really like it. And, um, you know, just like skills, okay, just add bonuses, like if you have that skill, you add a bonus to your saying throw. That's nice. I even, actually, I even uh, watched a video online. Uh, I'd have to find it again. It was a Google Plus game of Machinations of the Space Princess, where what they did is they replaced the skills with basically this idea. They still had the same saving throws from here, but they used them as skills. Um, so yeah, if you're going to go for simple, if you're, you might as well go all the way for simple. Uh, just like one single saving throw. And every class starts at a different number, but they have bonuses for different things. That works. Now, uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess. This one is a case of old school saving throws where they're more vague. Uh, you have like poison, but poison represents also like death effects. Uh, you have uh, a save against magic or a magical device or object. I forget how they say it. Um, against the um, breath weapon which is basically all area effects, not only a dragon's breath weapon or whatever. Um, so yeah, um, I, I think in these ones, I, I like again, I don't mind that it might be hard to get at first, despite a constitution, for example, or stuff like that, because they're not directly related to, abil uh, to the ability scores anymore. Uh, they might actually like the ability scores might give bonuses in some cases, but they're not directly related to them, if you get what I mean. So, whereas a fortitude save, I feel, should represent someone's constitution score, I think that a poison, poison save is perfectly fine as it is being harsh or, or whatever, despite what someone might have in constitution. Um, because they're separate, and because you can see them as different ideas. So, I'm fine with it, in this case. And also, like in every single game here that I'm gonna mention, or that I already mentioned, unlike in Machinations, like, the, the saving throws get better, so it's easier to excuse if it starts out really harsh, because you're like, it'll get better by itself, you don't have to invest uh, points that you could put elsewhere. And uh, finally, the one that for me came very close to being, like, if you're gonna, you, you have machinations on one side that has the, like, if you take 3.5's idea and go, well, if they're not gonna be, like, just vague game effects, and if you're gonna directly represent ability scores, don't just take three, take all, all of them. So that's machinations of the Space Princess. And something very similar, what they did, they kind of went for both, is in uh, Castles and Crusades. And this is kind of like Machinations, where it came really close for me to find it perfect, but then this one thing kind of made it bothersome to me. Um, now, what I love about it is that every ability score is related to a saving throw, something I really like. No such thing as a dump stat. I find that... I think for any version of D&D, the best thing you can do is just like have every stat help with a saving throw, and already there's no such thing as a dumb stat, you know, because for example, in Castles and Crusades, the, uh, like, it, what they do is they have the, um, 
the saving throws, the categories are like in uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess and other, other old school uh, D&D, where they're kind of like poison, death effects, uh, paralysis, breath weapon, etc. But in uh, Castles and Crusades, for example, what they do is they, uh, they link it to an ability score directly. So it's kind of like machinations where every ability score is a save for something, but they're not exactly representations directly of... For example, a strength score is for paralysis and constriction. So it makes sense. It, it's kind of like, yeah, it, it's a representation of the strength score, but it's not like a direct representation. It's more abstract. So it doesn't have to directly represent, whereas strength and power, I feel like it should represent it mathematically. Um, then you have, for example, you know, obviously, dexterity, uh, breath weapon, and traps. Constitution, disease, energy, drain, and poison. Intelligence, arcane, magic, and illusion. And uh, that actually works also with, like, in uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess, wisdom and intelligence are the two um, ability scores that affect the saving throws. The more physical ones are uh, affected by wisdom, and the ones related to magic... Uh, are affected by intelligence. So, um, yeah, you have like, um, for example, Charisma in uh, Castles and Crusades is the, the one you use for uh, against uh, death attacks and fear and charms. Um, so, um, but what's interesting is they split, usually death and poison are the same. And in Castles and Crusades they split because, they split them because Poison is with, con is with uh, Constitution now, and Death is with Charisma. Uh, so that's cool because you can still apply. You can you can go for both if you're um, if you're using like uh, stuff from one type of D&D where it's a representation of the ability score, then that's easy. There you go. If you're using the old uh, D&D, then you just look like where it goes in this case. Like oh, paralysis. Where's paralysis in Castles and Crusades? Okay, it's the strength one because you you roll from your ability score directly. Um, I like that a lot. However, uh, the thing that doesn't make it perfect for me is that uh, in Castles and Crusades you have the siege engine, where basically you have your ability scores and then you have like you have if if uh, one of them is a prime attribute. A prime ability score or whatever um, you have to get a 12 on your d20 and if it's not you have to get an 18 and for most races you have you have two of them that basically it's a plus six you have to get at least 18 it, it, it's as if all your saving throws were 18 and except two of them they're 12 and then you get your bonuses from your ability scores to, to modify that or penalties and humans get three. So that's fine for level one characters. Fine. I also see it as fine for stuff like you also use them for skills, kind of like in uh, crypts and things. Um, yeah, because basically um, the idea of uh, from crypts and things, and uh, it was taken from the blog. Oh, wait. I'm gonna take a moment to uh, give credit where credit is due. Just look it up. Uh, do, do, do. let's see. Okay, Acratic Wizardry. Dot blogspot. Dot com. Um, that's where Crimson and Things uh, got the idea from. But to be fair to Castles and Crusades, basically they they're the ones who, as far as I know, initially put the the whole saving throws and skills. Are the same thing in ability scores, you know, uh, uh, rolling for strength or whatever. They're the same thing. So it's kind of interesting where they really simplified it, but at the same time, they really split it. Um, and I really like it in that aspect that for skills, it's fine. I love it for skills. And uh, you get to add your level to all those rolls. So it does get better. And uh, in that sense, it really works. It's really awesome. Um, 
the only thing that makes it not as great for me, the only thing that stops it from, from being like my, uh, oh, that, this is perfect, that's it, is that when you're fighting a monster, the monster's hit dice are um, subtracted from your uh, bonuses. And can even, be, for example, if you're a level 3 and you're fighting a level, like a monster with 4 hit dice, then you actually have a minus 1 to your normal roll. Uh, yeah. If, however, you're a level 10 and you're fighting a level uh, a monster with 8 hit dice, you have a plus 2. Ah, uh, no, sorry, what I mean is the, the monster removes like gives you a penalty of 8 but because you have a plus 10 from your level you have plus 2 left to your typical um, saving throw where then you have to get either 12 or 18 and then ability score modifiers uh, also it's kind of weird to explain because you could make like an ability score that's very low you could make it a prime so you could be a guy with a strand of 8 but make it a prime so you have a plus 6 on that save so you're really weak to swing a sword but then you can lift stuff up better than the guy with a strand of like 14 who didn't take strand as a prime so i guess you could explain it as training like you know how to lift it and where it doesn't make you stronger when you swing your sword but you know how to get out of like a grapple you know how to lift stuff you you know from where to do it, it you can kind of explain it like the same with intelligence like um you know, the ability score in intelligence could be natural intelligence and then taking a prime is you trained at it. You trained to be faster, to think fast, like, anyway, stuff like that. But it does mean that most of your ability scores won't be primes, even if you're a human. Well, if you're a human, half of them won't be. It's not as bad, but my point being is that, especially if, you know, you when you're a group of adventurers, you often face monsters with a lot of hit dice, you'll find yourself very often with saving throws that are always harsh, no matter what. Um, maybe not all the time. Like, I, I thought about it, it's not as bad as I thought at some point, like... But very often, if you have to face kind of like this bus monster, and yeah, okay, I'll agree, a bus monster should be difficult, but... You know... The higher you go in D&D, the harsher the results from monsters are, or the harsher the spells from wizards, where you have to resist them. And if your chances are always 1 in 20, in the sense that you, you, you'll need a 20 or you can't get it, uh, then it does become kind of like harsh, but not in the same way as in 3.5, where you have to get a DC of this. Um... But yeah, I mean, I haven't done the math, I just mean, it does seem a bit harsh, it's the only thing that stops it from being perfect for me, because for me, the perfect, like, the perfect saving throw system would have to be one where every ability scorer has a part to play, and the challenge of it is scaled to the challenge at hand. It's not static, it can depend. But at the same time, like, in a way that just facing a monster with the same level as you... For example, in 3.5, when you face a monster that's about your level, and this is not a statement of, like, balancing monsters for the party, and no, nah, I'm just talking about saving shows here, and what I mean by that. Whereas if you're facing a tougher monster, yeah, it should be tough. But if you're facing, let's say, a monster of equal power as your own, um, then your saving throw is kind of like in that line. It's it's in equal power, you know? Um, but if you're facing a tougher monster, then maybe you, you it'll be the same thing where you have to get one, yeah, you have to get a 20 or you fail. Um, that's fine, because then you're facing a tougher monster, but in Castles and Crusades, let's say you're... Um, your saving throw is not from a prime, and let's say you have a 10 in your ability score, or maybe an 8 or like a 7, something that gives you a penalty. And then the monster effectively, just by being the same power as you, is canceling all of your bonuses, and then you're left with your average or even crappy ability score to make a saving throw of 18, or 19 if you have a minus 1. 
Um, so, and as soon as the monster has like one hit dice more than you, two, then you're like really. I find like the one in twenty chances can come up a bit too often in castles and crusades. Um, to the point where otherwise I really like it. So. I'm trying to, I think at some point I might try to house rule castles and crusades because I really like most of it, it's just that little aspect that bothers me. I haven't stopped to think about it that much yet and right now I'm uh, running Lamentations of the Flame Princess uh, for the moment. Uh, but I think at some point I might actually do my own mashup of like just picking apart aspects I like and um, you can be sure that like the, um, a lot of castles and crusades would make it into my um, um, Ideal old school version of D&D. <laughs> I don't know if that even makes sense because a lot of people would say that the old school version is the ones look like the most similar to the old ones. But I mean, maybe like the ones that I don't absolutely have to use miniatures and I don't have to keep track of a lot of feet, feats. Because as, as I've said before, I really like 3.5, but I don't like it all the time. Um, so yeah. So anyway, that's my whole discussion about saving throws. Um, I feel it's one of those things where I'm not really happy with any of them, like, all of them have something I kind of like, but it's not, like, perfect for me. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel, maybe maybe you're luckier than me, maybe you feel like, yeah, this is perfect. Maybe, in a way, the one with the single saving throw is the one that you just can relax, because you have so little to think about, like, uh, does it fairly represent my character? Like, yeah, whatever, it does, you know, <laughs> you have a single one, there you go. Put your bonus from... From your ability scores maybe that's the right one um or maybe a mix of actually i'm kind of thinking maybe a mix of machinations and 3.5 huh yeah that, that could work and then you use the uh, castles and crusades uh cate cat categories you mix and match so you can use material from both like you know more modern versions and old versions you can have the best of both worlds there yeah it can work anyway thanks for watching and do let me know what you think in the comments please uh, i'm always happy to discuss these things uh whether you agree or disagree it's still interesting so uh yeah thanks for watching